Hey, everybody. I wanted to take a minute this week to show you some neat effects that we can apply to text and other elements in our Photoshop work. And I also want to make sure you know how to save as a PDF to make sure that you're able to send your files through email or upload them to Blackboard. So here we go. Here I am in Photoshop and I'll just choose file new. I'm going to go to print and let's go with 11 by 17 in the portrait orientation, which is vertically 300 resolution, RGB color, white background, etc. cetera, create. Here I am with my empty page. So I, I have an idea from my sketchbook and I'll just go ahead and put it in. So I'll press the T key for type and click in my page. It drops in this Laura Mibson placeholder text and I'll type, um, that didn't work, right? My, my text is all over the place. Let me go ahead and let me undo all of that. Actually, I'm going to copy the text so I don't have to type it again. There. Okay, back to square one. What if I take my type tool and draw out a text box? So I've now drawn something that that text can be contained within. I'll just paste my text in that I typed earlier and maybe stretch it out so that my text box will fit the whole page. This is uh, when I was in undergraduate school, one of the Professors had this in a big banner across the front of his room. If you don't have time to do it right, when will you have time to do it again? So that's, you know, there it is. It's on the page, black and white. Great. People can read it, but let's spice it up. First of all, I'm going to go back into the background here and I'm going to choose a, a let's say a gradient background. That's not the gradient that we want. Maybe purples I like that one. I like this one. It's sort of a kind of a sunset inspirational. So I've applied a gradient fill to the background. Now let's, let's change up some of this text here. The, the, well, all of the text, this serif font isn't doing what I really think it needs to do. It's not exciting enough. So let's see if I can have something in black letter, right? Maybe that is going to make it look like medieval text you know, knowledge passed down from the middle ages, or maybe we can look, make it look like comic book text. Let's see. Decorative. That's not right. Clobber in time, crunchy, regular. How about more fonts. Let's look for something more on online. Oh, I like this one though. Acme Gothic extra wide. What is college? Oh, this is like a computer readout. Industry, Politica, right? Big, bold jumping out at the, at the viewer. I put it in all caps for a reason. I'm going to go with industry here. That's the one I want. Okay. It's looking a little more dynamic. Notice that I, I'm actually moving the entire text box. When I click and drag this around, I'll use my smart guides, this purple line that appears here in the center to center the text. And I'm just going to highlight the word if I'm going to change this color to white and I'm going to make it a lot larger, you know, for emphasis sake, if, and we'll do the same thing here with when I'll make it much larger. I'll actually make if a little less large right now, they're both 150 pixels. I'll color it white. Great. And then this one also, I will color it white. We can tighten up the space between these letters if we use the, the tracking for the, the letters overall. So let's try zero here. There we go. Minus 50. Okay. It's looking pretty nice. Maybe we can do the same thing here. Change that tracking number to something like 50. So for this one, it's not going to work. Or what we can do is change it overall. Bump it all back a little bit. There we go. And we'll make that overall just to match. If you don't have time to do it right, when will you have time to do it again? Okay. That's, that's a little better. Maybe I'm going to leave it like this. Let's say this is it. All right. 
I can take my text box and stretch it out like this. Maybe I want to take up a little more space on the page. I don't need as big of a text box as, as I have here done. Okay. So let's say here we have it, right? Well, while I'm, I'm here, I actually want to see if I can get it. There we go. So what this has done is it's, it's measured to the baseline of my top line of text and put that in the center of this document. And if I do it just right, the baseline is what the text sits on top of there, perfectly centered, but visually it looks, still looks odd. So I'm, I'm actually going to drag it up a little bit. I'm going to drag this down to, to reflect that baseline that's in the center. And then I'm just going to do it kind of like this so that we visually, to me, this works better there. Okay. So here we have this text poster, pretty nice. So here we have it, but I want to jazz up this text some. I'll press control here on the text block and maybe we'll try warp text style. And here we can choose different ways to make this text have a shape. It's kind of neat, right? Inflate, how about twist, All right? This makes it kind of look like a, a scary dream. Let's do it that way. Now I'll come and move this around a little bit again. So all we've done is, is put this text that made it sort of wavy. Now what I want to do is I'm going to copy this text, copy it down, turn off one of those layers. I'll press control and click on the text and choose rasterize type. So I've now turned that editable text into shapes. And so now I can apply effects to those shapes, such as bevel and emboss, right? I clicked on the FX item and I can change the way that the text looks. I maybe not bevel and emboss for this one. How about stroke? Click on it, two pixel stroke, right? Maybe we don't want it to be black. Let's make it red. Well, that's, that's too much. 27 pixel stroke too, right? Let's see. Can we go up? That's 12 pixels there. So we have a, a little red, red stroke on it. We can make it glow, give it the satin texture. And all of these, you know, have these variables that you can change for them. Color overlay. You press these plus items to have duplicate it so that you could apply two different color overlays. Now it has a color overlay. The intention there is that you would change it with something along in here. I don't want the cover color overlay, gradient pattern, outer glow, drop shadow, right? Let me click on that one. And let's see the drop shadow. We'll just make it sure. Let's make it white here. Distance, jack that up, jack that up, jack that up so that we can see what's happening. Now we can change these, these variables here change the blend mode back to normal so we can, we can see it a little better what we're doing. And I'll just command minus to, to zoom out a little bit, to have a better look at it. We'll do 10, maybe make them spread out a little bit more distance. Now, right. It's coming off the bottom. That's because my light angle is 90 degrees. It's my lights coming from straight out. So if I want them to pop out in this direction, maybe I could do that. Cool. I think that would attract some attention. It, it asks us a, an interesting question. It's text-based design. And I'm just going to take this and tweak that placement on here a little more. I think visually, I, I just like it to trend more towards the top. If we look at my method of separating the page into thirds, right? We could see one, two, three big chunks here. And then one, two, three here. The dotted lines are interior measures. I like for it to fit sort of within those symmetrically within that, those third measures. I've done that. I like the way it looks. Let's turn off all of these guides and grid by pressing command semicolon and command apostrophe. Now I want to save it. First, let me check my image size and make sure it's the size that I want it to be. I pressed image and image size. 
3,300 pixels. If I was only putting it on a screen, that might mean something. Let's look at inches. It is 11 by 17 inches at 300 pixels per inch, which is a good resolution for print. See how nice it looks? I'll press OK. Now, if I was to send this to a client, here is the, un the opened Photoshop file is 72 megabytes. If I save this, it's 48 megabytes. That's a large file. So you don't want to send something like that to a client and they more than likely will not have Photoshop at all and wouldn't be able to open a Photoshop document. So what you want to do after you have saved it for yourself, command S and I'll call this poster and see how it says poster.psd. We do not want to send that to a client. I'll put it on my desktop and save it there. Okay. Now I want to save another copy to send to a client. I'll choose save as, and here under format, I'll choose Photoshop PDF. PDF stands for portable document format. Anybody anywhere can open a PDF and it's a much smaller file size. So choose format Photoshop PDF, save. Okay. These settings are all fine. You do not have to check preserve Photoshop editing capabilities. That'll make it even smaller. And if you want to make it even smaller, you can change the compatibility. Acro going all the way back to Acrobat 5 is, is like a long ways back. So you might take this up to Acrobat 8 or even Acrobat 9. Press Save PDF. And now on my desktop, I can find this poster.pdf file. And let's make that maximum size and command zero, there is my poster that I've made. Jazzed up the text, I moved it around, I warped it a little bit, gave it a, some effects like a stroke and a drop shadow, and then I saved it as a PDF. I hope that helps as you carry on with your work and gives you a few more tools and options in your toolbox. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks.